Welcome along to Man in the Mirror. It's Hayden Williams here. Man in the Mirror is the podcast where I talk to a male guest each week about their life, about work, and I have a rummage around their bathroom cabinets and they tell me about their favourite products. My guest this week is Robin James, known better online as Man for Himself. He is a hair grooming, fragrance and style blogger, um, mainly on YouTube and Instagram. Gives so much good advice. Um really helps men with with self-confidence and with their self-esteem, but just uh, someone who gives really honest advice on on all of those things, knows a hell of a lot about skincare, grooming, fragrance, and about clothes. So I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. Robin is is a a fantastic person to interview. Um, What I'll do afterwards is is put some information about some of the products he mentioned. He has this really nice idea of um, high and low, so you know that there are some products that you don't need to spend necessarily a whole lot of money on and some where it's worth spending the money because they have a good effect. So here's Robin James, man for himself on Man in the Mirror. Welcome along to another episode of Man in the Mirror. It's Hayden Williams here and my guest today is Robin James, who online is known as Man for Himself. He's an expert on hair, grooming, fragrance and style, Hi, Robin. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks, Hayden. What an intro, an expert. Let's go with that. An ex- well, you are. You are. Well, certainly to me. Um, but thank you so much for doing this today. And um, the idea of the podcast is I like to get a, a male guest on and, and talk about their, their life, how they got to where they are, but also to, um, to help me in my kind of journey of finding out more about skincare and grooming and get better at it myself but also it's it's a conversation that maybe you have more regularly but I feel like I don't always get the um the advice that I'd like and it's sort of hard to know where to to get the information on on products that really work for people if it feels like that kind of conversation that you might have with a, a barber or something like that so I thought that we'd put, we'd put it in podcast form and um I'm hoping it would be useful for for other people too. So that's that's the idea of of um, man in the mirror, anyway. But um, it'd be great to know a little bit about your your background, if you don't mind. How did you get into the kind of work that you're doing now? Have you been were you working in journalism before? Or, or, so yeah, or? I I so I've been doing this uh, man for himself, which is uh, as you said, male grooming, so start, um skincare, hair care, fragrance. I've been full time in this um, for six years. Okay. But before that, I worked in TV. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, so my background, um, I had uh, done a, a postgrad down here in London. So I'm based in Peckham uh, in broadcast journalism. And the idea was that I would go into newsrooms and I really wanted to work in hard news. Um, but the reality of that was I got my first job working for Channel 4 in reality TV. So I kind of went down this more glitzy, shiny yeah. floor sort of route rather than being on the front line. Um, so it was more front line of fashion shows and um, sort of entertainment format. So yeah, I, wor- I worked in TV and I moved about. So I, I, uh, I worked for uh, Channel 4 and Sky Living. Uh, I was at NBC Universal across their portfolio of channels in the UK. And then my sort of my last place of work was ITV. Oh, okay. And I started in entertainment production and then I moved into uh, digital marketing. I launched ITVB. Did you? Um, and then I uh, moved into this new team, which was more ITV creative, working into marketing. So I kind of moved everywhere. Um, but my my own stuff, uh, Man From Self, which was at the time called The Utter Gutter, um, which I I love the name, but it, it wasn't the sort of <laughs> aspirational name that I suppose I'm trying to sort of go towards now. Um, what was it? The, the Utter Gutter? The Utter Gutter. So the Utter Gutter was a club night in Glasgow, which was this. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, so I, I, I had my undergrad in Glasgow and there was this sort of like, um, alternative night um, in just south of, um, actually was it south? It, it was near the Clyde. And I loved the name Utter Gutter. So I had kind of claimed it as my own. Right. Um, and, and then when I was kind of thinking about really taking this seriously, I'd had some meetings with agents and this one woman had said, the name is awful. You need to change the name. It's absolutely awful. Um, so I changed the name and that's where Man From Self has come from. Ah. And it was, I guess, 
you know, it, it, these things tend to happen, you know, organically and, and, and bit by bit. But that that sort of move away from being employed by someone else and and, and mm. in the TV production side to doing your own thing and, and kind of, you know, stepping out, I suppose, in, in front of the camera and, and and creating your own brand was that a was that a, a, a big bold step that you were you know totally sure you were going to do, or did you have some some sort of reservations about it? How did it come about? Yeah, so I. I kind of I kind of fell into the whole online thing, but I think I fell into it at exactly the right time. Um, yeah. So when when I was doing my postgrad, we had to do part of it on. I mean, we did camera stuff. We were producing. We were shooting. We were presenting. So we were kind of learning to self shoot and do absolutely everything. Right. And I really enjoyed basically having starting off with nothing and by the end you've quite literally created this whole package piece of 30 seconds or a minute or whatever it might be but as part of this course we had to um create a blog and loads of people had had created these blogs about um sort of like foreign affairs and conflict and and i decided to do mine on celebrity because i like the fluff yeah um and i remember actually as part of this postgrad course it was my lowest score which was in uh, the online journalism, because the guy, uh, hi Marcus, if you're listening, had said that <laughs> no one would be interested in my personal opinion. Oh. Um, so yeah, it's funny that you can then build a career on a personal opinion. Um, so yeah, I, cr- I created that. And actually the platform that I'm now using as manfromself.com, if you went all the way back, it would come from that one blog that I had when I had my postgrad. I enjoyed doing absolutely everything. And so then when I was having a, a bit of a, a try of everything in digital marketing, digital production, I, I did some sort of red carpet reporting when I was at Sky Living, because right. um, it used to be Sky, at Sky Showbiz. And I really enjoyed the sort of the buzz of everything and kind of, you know, having to grab celebs and get these stories and then go back to the office and turn it around really quickly. So I knew that I enjoyed doing everything. Um, so yeah. when I wasn't enjoying my job in digital marketing, I, I kind of thought I have to do something that I love. Um, yeah. and it was a case of pulling all these separate parts together and creating my YouTube channel. And, and that's kind of taking all those skills that I'd learned from the postgrad and through, um, my experience in TV and deciding that I would do it for myself. It's, it's, yeah, it's funny you say that it just, it does feel like it's ended up kind of, Using all the skills you've got, and, and certainly looking at the mm. some of um, Robin's clips on YouTube and, and what he posts on online, you know there is it, it's it's raw and it's honest, but there's there's great production. So how fantastic you've managed to sort of mm. use all those things and and sort of galvanize them into into this brand. And, and Man for Himself now is obviously it's a it's a big deal. There's forty thousand followers on on Instagram and over well over four hundred thousand on on YouTube. So yeah, yeah, it, it, it feels like, and what I like about it, I think is there, you you it's quite holistic in that, you know, in terms of helping people find their style, it's, it's, you know, it's not just grooming, it's not just hair, it's not just fragrance, mm. it, it's, it's also clothes so that you can actually kind of really help a, a man or, or, or woman, you know, find their, find their confidence and help with mm-hmm. self-esteem. So some of the um, street styles that you do, it's such, such a yes. great thing, you know, just really finding out about a person and, and sort of helping them, you know, find their, their inner sense of style across all those different things. And it's, it, they're wonderful. And I, I certainly suggest people, if they haven't checked you out, should, should look at those but it must that must feel like a really rewarding thing to do those street styles yeah it is so there's there's the street style which is me sort of stopping people on the street and asking them about the wearing um and sort of like the grooming choices and then there's restyled which sorry that's yeah my mistake the the ones where you sort of choose someone deliberately and 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 sort of restyle yeah so that essentially is a makeover series where i take one guy and i uh, I create a skincare routine for them. I do a fragrance consultation. We do a whole styling and they get a haircut. So I love doing that because, there, I mean, there's so many reasons I love doing that. But one is that I get to work directly with just one person yeah. and I get to know all about them. I get to sort of hear kind of what makes them tick. I get to hear about sort of their past experiences and things that might have sort of influenced them in sort of in their choices of style or grooming. And then I get to help them sort of tailor something that's that's good for them. I feel like, you know, in, in what we do, we're so often told what we should be doing and how we should be doing it. But really, all of this stuff is just anything that can make you feel good. And it's I think when you've got all those choices, it can sometimes feel like 
there's too much there. Overwhelming, but, yeah. Yeah. But what I'm trying to do is almost like just funnel it down and say, look, for your skin type or for the type of fragrances that you like or your own personal style, let's maybe sort of try some of these. Um, and it's so rewarding and it sounds maybe a bit worthy, but it's like, I absolutely love it. And the guys, I've had three guys so far and they're all totally different, but they've all got like their own story. And by the end of it, you can really see this transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're smiling, they're super happy, yeah. they've got this confidence. And it's just great because so often with what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just talking to a camera and it's sometimes you don't get that instant feedback. Whereas when you are in uh, in a shop or a, um, in, a, in a sort of hotel room pulling all stuff together, you can see in their faces, you know, what this means. So yeah, I love doing it it's literally one of my favorite things oh, well, it, it comes across as well and, and for, for that person having the, the the restyle it must you know that's something that they can take on into life isn't it it is mm. properly sort of transformational and, and giving them those those tips of how they can utilize those skills and and um yeah. style tips you know into further into their sort of daily life it's just a really i think empowering people to sort of I'm, i mean again i i'm always so conscious that you know really this is hair care, this is fragrance, this is skincare. And people might be thinking, oh, God, come on, you know, what does that mean? But I just think with these little things, they can just impact everything in life. They can make you feel yeah. more confident in relationships. They can make you feel um, kind of like you've got more control. Uh, and also they're little rituals that can sort of help you disconnect from yeah. all the stuff that's going on in the world <laughs> just to kind of step away. And the, the first guy that I had, Johnny, had had you know quite a story of having some really hard times and he'd hit rock bottom and he just wanted a chance to kind of work out what he was doing with with skincare and with fragrances and I get updates from him and he's such a nice guy he's just had his 40th this month and it's just really nice to see that you know he's kept with the skincare he's gone to a really decent barber oh, that's good. and he's kind of like crafted this own sense of style and it's just it's so good to see yeah Oh, that's brilliant. Well, probably quite a nice segue into to talking a bit about some of your sort of grooming and, and skincare and fragrance essentials. And I'm sure this is um, you know, more difficult for you than it is for, yeah. for lots of people because, you know, no doubt you, you've, you've crafted a good regime anyway, but, but also that you, I'm sure you, across your desk, you know, lots of, lots of products come, come your way. So it'd be great if you could talk me through a little bit about your, your sort of key skincare regime and, and the, the products you might use, Robin. Yeah. So, I mean, as you said, there's there's lots of products that, that arrive on my desk and I'm looking at quite a lot here. And there are some great products, but there are also some that just aren't that good. Um, but for, for me, my I kind of have quite a, I say basic, I mean, I've put up videos before and people have said, you've got too many snacks and this would take ages and, and whatever. But I, I think it is about sort of finding out what works for you in, in the sort of the most basic, I would use a cleanser. Like I, I pulled out some stuff before this and I like stuff as, as simple as like the Bulldog range. Yeah, Bulldog it's good, skincare. isn't it? I, it's incredible. And I think a really good price point. Totally. Also like all the research and development that they do is like second to none. They put a lot of time into that. And some of those products I, th I think are incredible. Like they've got a whole oil control range, um, which has witch hazel. And um, they've also got another one, which is um, rice, like a rice augy thing. Um, it's basically to sort of calm the skin. But I, I like all of those. So I, I tend to go kind of like low to high. So yeah. if it's just like a gentle face wash cleanser, I might do something like that. But then on the flip side, one of my favorites is a Chanel mousse, um, which certainly isn't three pounds from Sainsbury's. <laughs> um, but this is just incredible. I feel like, again, a lot of the products that, especially us as men, are sort of marketed towards us are so stripping, your face feels squeaky clean, which is not a good thing. Yeah. And it tends to feel tight. You know, there's so much that is abrasive with exfoliating. But this sort of thing, just a really light cleanser. So is this, is this the first forming. step, Robin? Is this is this mousse a, a yeah, cleanser? Yeah, so this, this would be my first step. So I've got this this mousse cleanser. So I, I tend to start with, it would be a cleanser. So I'd face wash in the shower. Um, and then after that, I would use a toner. So for me, there's many different toners. But for anyone that's thinking, what is a toner? Do I need a toner? Toners really were used to kind of balance out the pH. So 
uh, cleansers used to maybe overstrip or they would sort of make an imbalance in the skin. Toners were there to kind of help to sort of to work that out or to start putting other things in. So another one that I I love, I've I've got one by Allies of Skin um, that's got niacinamide in it, which is really great for um, sort of like anti-inflammation, anti-redness, and also just the bottle's really nice. I always think with a toner, if it's a mist, keep it in the fridge because for a hot day like we are having at the moment when we're recording this, it's so nice just to, to get out. But another one I have, I tend to have um, quite an oily T-zone as a lot of us guys have. Um, but Boy de Chanel is about £35. It does last. Yes, it's not cheap. But I love the, um, they've got an anti-shine toning lotion. And it's just a couple of drops of that across the face and it kind of then will we'll prep it for the next steps. I would then move on to a serum. Um, serums, I always think, like my skincare routine really has really changed up in the past two years. And I do tend to sort of tailor it depending on what my skin needs. And that can be seasonal. That can be uh, if my skin is having like small breakouts or if it's feeling tight, then a serum is really kind of where you get to kind of tailor it. So there's a few different serums that I like. Um, there's a brand called Tropic, okay. which I absolutely love. Um, they've got a few different things. It's all sort of clean and green and all those good things. Yeah. Um, but they've got one which is a vitamin C serum. So vitamin C is really fantastic to brighten the skin. Um, I really like that. Again, I keep it in the fridge. I mean, my, my fridge tends to just be like hummus and skincare. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's You've got a big show in the wind. dark. You don't grab for the wrong <laughs> yeah. thing. Exactly, a window into my, into my soul. Um, so I would, I would use a serum and then I would go into an under eye. And again, under eye creams, I think are just something for that sort of like instant gratification. Any of with those uh, sort of little silver roller balls, again, keep that in the fridge because it is so nice to sweep across your under eyes. Um, but I have one by, um, I don't have it on my desk, but it's by Sunday Riley. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. And just a couple of um, dabs of that with your ring finger, because that's the lightest touch okay. and just tap, tap, tap under the eye and round the orbital area. Um, I love that. But again, there's one by like Heath London, which yeah. is a great British brand. I have that actually. Um, that's really good. Yeah. The green one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the really, really roller, nice. And roller up front. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that roller is so good. I took one away on holiday with me. Um, and just when you're about to go out to the pool or when you come in after an evening of sunning yourself, it's just so nice to feel that against the skin. So do you keep that in the fridge too, Roman? I would keep that in the fridge, yeah. Um, I haven't thought of that. It's a, it's a really good idea. It's just really nice. Um, and like you can even do like spoons in the fridge if you don't want to use an under eye cream and you can just then put the spoon straight onto your... Um, onto your eyes and that will again right. do the same thing of kind of like flushing out any of the um the sort of build up and it's it's just it's a nice feeling yeah. i think with you know with a lot of this skincare it's about how you're feeling rather than about anything that that's being done um so that's the under eye and then i would go on to a moisturizer uh, one of my absolute favorites is by murad mm -hmm. um and it's the oil and pore control mattifier I tend to use a lot of mattifying products. I know there's a lot of sort of the big boys and girls in, in the world of skincare that say don't use mattifying, your skin shouldn't be matte. But I think a lot of guys aren't going on to then use primers and makeup. Exactly. And if you're not, then actually having this mattifying effect is really good. Uh, because especially if you were, uh, I don't know, having your picture taken or whatever it might be, or just for day to day, you don't want to be a, a shining beacon of hope. No. Just having something that is mattifying is great. This one also has an SPF 45 broad spectrum. So UVA and UVB. Um, I always think that you're better to have a separate SPF. Yes. But if you are going to use something and it has an SPF in it, then really at least SPF 30. But this Murad one. I mean, I always know if something's good when I actually buy it <laughs> rather than waiting for someone to send me something. And this must be about my sixth one. I absolutely love it. I think it's great. Is um, it hard to find those um, those products with a, that higher SPF at 45, you said? Yes. So like Bulldog have a, have a good one, a protective, but it's only an SPF 15. So I would just, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, you, you are better to have either a separate moisturizer and then an SPF over the top. If it's for face, I would always go on SPF 50. Um, this Murad one, like if I was going on holiday, I would probably 
use if if it was hand luggage only, it would be like this, and then I'd have a small like SPF uh, fifty, like some great ones by um, La Roche Posay, which is um, a French sort of pharmacy brand. They're not expensive. They're super lightweight. It doesn't leave a white cast. Uh, it doesn't block your pores. Um, and then another one like I've been using is Vichy, again super lightweight, kind of this sort of watery consistency. And um, but that would kind of be all the skincare. But if if someone is listening and thinking that's too much, then cleansing, so face washing, um, a moisturizer and an SPF really could give you the, the sort of three steps you need. And that's really useful. And it's really interesting to hear you talk about this, I suppose, an, an idea I've only thought about in, in terms of clothes before, but that sort of high, low and, and that mix of products that might be, you know, from a high street chemist alongside some products that might cost a bit more but um, you know why wouldn't you and there's no, there's no reason not to exactly mix things up like that and i suppose like you say something with with a product like bulldog if if it has the efficacy and it does what it needs to do and it's a reasonable price why wouldn't you why not in, you yeah. know, use that in your routine we're so led by marketing you know a lot of these products essentially are the same things and it's just either a celebrity face or gorgeous packaging but when you take it all out of that it's it's kind of the same thing and um, one of the other products actually um that i use at night so i always double cleanse so double cleansing is um using an this is only at night it's using an oil first so there's one by dhc uh which it's a Japanese skincare brand um, and they've got their deep cleansing oil. This literally is like a couple of pounds. I always get it on Amazon. Um, it's always on sale. It is amazing. So you would do that onto dry skin, especially if you're using an SPF. This will help to break it down. Or if you're wearing any makeup products, this is going to help to break all of that down. So a double cleanse, a bit of oil onto dry hands, work it into, the, into your dry face and you'll feel the sort of bits of things sort of breaking down and then you'd go on to use your normal cleanser um which might be you know a foaming face wash or um sort of a light mousse onto the skin work it through and then take it off but that double cleanse is one of the things i would say that has positively changed my skin um in the past couple of years yeah. and what about um shaving robin are you a, are you a daily shaver or i know you've got a, a, a mustache but do you have to I have a mustache. deal with the, the rest of your face every day or do you, do you come at it a few times a yeah week? so again it's it's changed quite a lot so i used to do a lot of wet shaving um and i would try it all i you know i've tried gillette i've tried wilkins sword i've tried harry's and those are all great but i tend to um electric shave now um yeah and like all the time really it's for me one of the things that has been the best for my skin especially on my neck in terms of like time um, and it's given me the most can, kind of control over like customizing what I'm doing. I used to have a really big handlebar mustache. So everything was removed except that handlebar. So to use an electric shaver, I'd kind of just pick up the um, <laughs> the end of the mustache and then shave under it. Um, but like I, I'd done some work a few years ago with Braun and I continue to use a lot of their um, products. Like they've, again, I just, I think they're a solid brand in terms of the high and low. Like they've got, they've got a full range of, there's a series five shaver, which is a foil shaver. Um, and you can change the bits on it. So you can go for a trimmer, you can go for a stubble trimmer, you can use it on the body. And then you can go all the way up to something like series nine, which is like, uh, like this titanium shaver. And it's, it's incredible. Like Rolls Royce. Yeah, it's really good. I gave my dad one of these and my dad doesn't do grooming at all nothing doesn't face wash doesn't use uh i mean he uses deodorant but he doesn't um moisturize like he is really lo-fi which yeah. to me is just like one of the worst things ever but um but he has this series nine and he absolutely loves it so yeah for, for shaving it's all about it's all about that um and then i really like these sort of multi-use oils and um, lab series i've got a three-in-one oil um which is good for i mean you might have seen this it's almost like when you leave it and you don't shake it you can see all the separate oils yeah but it's good for um a sort of pre-shaving uh, during and then after but they're really very good and mm. um, but the sh my, my shaving is really kind of quite simple yeah the, the tools i've got or you know some of the panasonic ones the brawn ones uh, and yeah, yeah but you've found what what works for you and that it, with the electric shave it doesn't make you red around the neck then you don't get no nothing but good. also i often think that's because people aren't doing the right prep right when it comes to shaving right. so 
like I am not a fan of physical exfoliants. So and the physical ones are the ones where you feel the bits in it. Um, except for the neck and onto the cheeks. So anywhere that has facial hair, because what you're doing is you're really cleaning that surface and you're moving any of the buildup. Mm-hmm. For anywhere else on the face, I'll use a chemical exfoliator uh, because it's it's gentler on the skin and you're not ripping at it. But if you are going to shave, then exfoliating with a physical exfoliator on the neck will help to sort of reduce any of that redness. And also not all electric shavers are created equally. You know, actually having that titanium um, foil strip does really help. So you want something super sharp that's not going to sit on the skin for too long and something that moves really quickly because it's going to help to cut through faster. You don't want to be scrubbing over it. Oh, that's really, that's great. And we met actually I think a month or two ago at a fragrance event. So I know mm-hmm. you're... I know you love your fragrance too. So I do. I, I certainly imagine you're you're someone that has quite an extensive collection. So yes. how do you go about your fragrance choice? Is it is it seasonal or you know according to mood or so it we're in a, a hot day in in July here yes. in the UK. What what would you reach for today? So I I sometimes stress myself out with fragrance, which is quite ridiculous. What, the choice thing. anxiety I kind thing. Of get re- yeah, choice anxiety. I, I have some in I have a room. Um, in my flat, which I kind of use as a dressing room, which is really quite nice. I thought you were going to say it's a whole fragrance room or something. Yeah, it's essentially a fragrance <laughs> room. Um, and on the shelves, I've got my heavy rotation, which is really the ones that I'm constantly reaching for. And then in boxes and on my desk is the other stuff, other stuff. Um, but there's there's so many different ones. When you asked there about, is it seasonal? I don't really do seasonal fragrance. Um, just because I always think it's more mood-based and... I think, you know, there's a lot of guys that may have just like one signature scent or one fragrance which they love. And I think that's great. But if you are someone that has more or kind of sees it more as the sort of the art side of just having something which really sort of represents how you're feeling, then like I quite often wear sort of heavier, oudier leather scents in summer. Um, Do you? Yeah, I just like how they kind of will kind of cocoon me and I just I love that sort of like yesterday I wore ombre leather by Tom Ford and I love the softness of that leather like it's not a hard leather it's almost like this really beautiful soft leather jacket that's been left in the sun and just when you've got that heat just across it it just does something with the skin I love it and it's kind of got this like fruitiness to it which I think comes out in sort of warmer weather um but I also like, uh, like I was wearing when I was wearing Molecule. So Molecule is using, as you'll know, just the yeah, ISO E yeah, Super, Super, which is that which is that one Molecule. Um, I really liked wearing that on holiday because I am, even if it's by the pool and I'm like plunging in it, I still want something on my skin. I like that idea of kind of like passing people and people just having like a, oh, what's he wearing? And also just for myself, it's kind of like almost having this invisible cloak across me. So Molecule is beautiful. And also I was taking a lot of samples away on holiday just to kind of try and to play with. But combining those with Molecule, I just thought was so great. And they've done it themselves, haven't they? Now there's the, there's obviously the, yes. well, there's a big old range anyway of eccentric and Molecule, but they started adding certain ingredients, didn't they? Like um, there's a mandarin and a... They've got a patchouli, patchouli. one. They've got an iris yeah, one. Um, yeah, which are beautiful. Um, there's a citrus one. Mandarin yeah, is so incredible. Good. And that's, it's, it's almost like one of the most like the truest mandarins that I think is out there. And it almost like just pops when you spray it. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, I I tend to... So my first ever fragrance uh, was one that my mum actually bought for my dad. And as I said, my dad wears nothing. And that was Clinique Happy, which oh, is so citrusy. That. It's so great. And every time I smell this, it transports me back to being about 14. But I wore that from about the age of 14 to literally about the age of 28 like I wore it I'm 30 how old am I 35 I've just had my birthday and I love it every time I smell it it's just such a good one it's so good it's so good but I wore that all the time and I became a bit obsessed with it and I had the shower gel and I had the like the the deodorant and it was just so good but now I tend to be a sort of deeper darker oudier leather smoky sort of scented guy anything which smells like a little boozy anything which kind of has a sort of um like not so much the gourmand but I I do like something which is uh, like there's, there's another one here I'm sort of going off in tangents um and this is what happens in my head in the morning when I have to pick <laughs> a fragrance and that's why it takes me so long to get ready um but I've got one by Lartisan um 
Parfume, which is Noir Equi, um, which basically smells like a French boulangerie. Like I'm just going to spritz oh, yes. it across. Isn't there some like hazelnut it, in there? Yeah, so there's, like there's chestnuts in this, but there's also chestnut, there's also a it. coffee note. It is oh, it's beautiful. So great, and it's not sickly sweet. It's not like you've just sprayed Britney Spears fantasy. Hi, Brittany, if you're listening, it's great. Um, <laughs> Hi, but it's just it's just so beautiful. And it's kind of those, it's kind of what I think a gourmand fragrance should be like. You know, it's it's transporting you to just a beautiful moment of walking along somewhere in Paris and smelling all these gorgeous smells on a Sunday morning. Like, I love that sort of thing. But yeah, uh, the other ones I said about this sort of boozy sense, um, there's one by Killian called Single Malt, Um which literally smells like a whiskey on ice. Like you've got all this sort of like, there's like a cooling facet to it, but there's also like this malty sort of scent. Um, and then I think actually when when we had met at, at the fragrance dinner, I, we were talking about Acro. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they've got one, oh, you might have to remind me on this, malt. It's called malt. Um, and it smells like a maltings. So I grew up in the Northeast of Scotland, um, which is the whiskey capital of the world. And I remember my, my dad has an engineering um, business and he would do a lot of work in these distilleries. And I just remember in the car, as you would get closer and closer to these distilleries, there was this oh, right. sort of smell that would hit you of the malting and it was really heavy uh, you'd have just like something that would really hang around in the car and growing up with that I just thought that was quite a normal smell but now every time I smell that in this malt it quite literally takes me back to those times and I am obsessed with it yeah I love it on my skin it's incredible those um those acro ones are interesting aren't they there's a the whole series that's all about um addictions and there's a addictions yeah, yeah. The coffee one uh, smoking a sex so yeah. ink now for tattoos and yeah really, really ink enjoy. which i really really enjoy to me that sort of smells like um it's almost like when you've cut yourself and it's the kind of like the taste of like metal yeah, yeah. um I, it's just i mean it's it's crazy what they can do with fragrance these days yeah. but i also like the what you said about um you know of course it's you know some people have the, the like the kind of seasonal thing but but Really, you know who makes the rules? If you want to, if you want to wear something more oudy in summertime, it's like that's that's the joy of fragrance, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you it's, do. You. It's personal, yeah. and and you you do you do you, and you you make it yeah. work. So I I love that. It's absolutely you know that kind of liberating idea that you you know your sense of style and and what fragrances work for you, and you're going to wear mm. them, which is great. And everything smells so different on different people. And also, you're not wearing the bottle. You're not wearing the campaign. Um, a lot of the questions I get are, can I wear this? Is this for men? Is this for women? I'm like, it yeah, doesn't matter. It. it actually, it's scented water. Like, chuck whatever you want over yourself. It's like mixed layer. I quite often will take something heavier, like a leather or a nude, and then I'll spritz across a rose on top. Oh, so the, yeah, the layering effect. Just to kind of give that a little more body. But then there's other days where I just think, I just want to wear the rose. You know, I just want to have something a bit lighter. And that's another great thing about um, Robin's content, both on on YouTube and on on Instagram, there's a real sort of thread that runs through. It's a real honesty and a kind of a, a no nonsense approach. Which again, I think you know what we're trying to do here with this podcast. And and if I can take a you know a tiny bit of influence from someone like Robin, is I'm not. Of course, you know there's so much artistry and creativity in in mm -hmm. fragrance and and skincare and and stuff that, that people do. But um, it just feels. It just feels it, I'd rather sort of demystify it and and you know I, what I don't want to do and I, and I certainly see this in in your work you know sort of kind of put people off with too much impenetrable vocabulary and and sort of ingredients and because as, as you've found out with your street styles or restyles you know pe people just want a regime or a fragrance or a product that's going to work for them and then they get on with their lives people aren't spending you know. 24 7 thinking about this stuff are they no i it's like i i never used to talk about fragrance because i found it so intimidating yeah the whole world of fragrance and the people that were talking about it were were talking with you know such as you said you know great vocab of you know all these big words and stuff i didn't really understand and the, and the notes that people and, don't know. yeah and just had all this knowledge and i just thought oh god i'm i 
can't do this. I'm not worthy. And I remember when I first started, I just, I wanted to hit every single note. This has this and this and this. And then I thought, you know what? Fragrance isn't about that. It's like, you know, it's like an art in that you like something, you don't. How does it make you feel? Yeah. Do you want to own that? Yes. No, it doesn't. It does not matter about what is in it. You know, a lot of those things, yes, there might be a note or there might be an accord or, or whatever it is. But if you can't smell that and you can smell a walk along the beach, then that is what that is. Yeah. Like that is up to you. But it also it, it kind of moves beyond parody, doesn't it, sometimes? And, and we've you know, all seen those things online where people kind of take the mickey out of fragrance campaigns. But you, you still feel sometimes that the amount of sort of verbiage and, and this kind of florid descriptions that gets put around a, a, a bottle of fragrance it, it yes. feels like sometimes it's to kind of make up for the fact that there's not often there's not much going on that much interesting <laughs> go, there's not much interesting things going on in the actual juice but yeah. I, yeah i just i find it really off-putting you know some if press releases come through and it just starts to sound ridiculous you know yeah it's like who like honestly it's it's it, sometimes there's this fight between whoever has been the nose and who's created this fragrance versus the marketing team. Yeah. And it's kind of like this fight between art versus this commercial yeah. money side. And yeah, they've yeah. said, listen, the biggest seller is X. We need that, but we need to kind of change it up slightly. But then Make it sound the person different. that's creating that said, oh, I don't think I want to do that. But then it's the money. So they've got this sort of battle between what a press release says versus the fragrance. But that is, that's big business, isn't it? And that's kind of what is um, keeping the world going around. Yeah. But you, you know, you can read some of that stuff sometimes, whether it's in a magazine or, if, you know, sometimes I will get press releases and things from you. So sort of get ready to spray the fragrance or use the product. And it can be a real sort of moment of deflation. You go, God, is, yeah, that's is that it? Yeah. Is that... <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, but I think it, you know, it's so great to, to hear you talk about the, the products. But um, do you find after your six, seven years, you know, now doing Man for Himself, it, have you found during that period that men in general have got more engaged with this kind of content? And, and you know, no doubt your numbers have grown during that period. Mm. But do, do you think in, in society as a whole, and no, 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 I, you know, I think I started this whole thing. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's more difficult to get men to talk about this. And I don't mm. actually don't think it is really, but um, are you sensing a shift in, in men being comfortable, you know, talking about fragrance and skincare regimes and all that? Is there, is there sort of, is there kind of evidence of in that for, with, with what you do? Yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely. So I've been doing, um, I've had, my YouTube channel for nine years. Um, and in that space and time, it has massively changed. Um, like my audience is 90% plus male. Um, and they are guys in the US and the UK, um, 18 plus, the sort of the heartlands around about sort of the 20s. But when I look at the audience and look at the sort of conversations I have with guys, they are more open now. Um, I think we are accepting that we have options and we have choices and we want to discuss those things. We're also really wanting to ensure that what we're spending money on is stuff that is going to work and stuff that delivers results. Totally. But I quite often see that the younger audience are more open in their conversations and they seem to be having these conversations with each other. And when I say younger, I'd be like, you know, late teens, which I don't have a lot of, but when you look in into um, the public comments on YouTube, it sometimes feels a little younger, but actually it's it's older guys who are coming in and consuming the content and then leaving and they'll often DM and ask about things. But younger guys are having more of these conversations. So they're growing up with having this conversation online, whereas older guys are having more private conversations about things. But people, I would say, are more open to sort of trying different things I remember when I first sort of, like, I've tried everything. And I always think, you know, I'd rather try it and decide, nah, that's not for me. But I always think the stuff I cover is not always stuff I like, but I always think someone will like this. So I always say, if you like A, then you're going to love this. Or if you have this type, this is not right for you. I, I featured a couple of like, sort of more of the cosmetic side of skincare. So more like makeup. And when I first featured that, it was like, you know, people were disgraced that I'd put a foundation on my skin and really? that is awful and men shouldn't do this and men can't do that and who are you to do this and blah, blah, blah. Just like 
oh, get a grow hip, seriously. But now, mm-hmm. you know, people are more, and this is just one thing, people aren't, they don't feel the need to, to be annoyed about something like that. Um, I think just because it is, it is more open and it's more acceptable. But maybe it's also because, you know, I'm now in my mid-30s and I'm just, I just, don't give a shit. Like I, I just, I'm not bothered. I've tried things. I've had various people say things to me and I'm just now like, well, you just own it and you do what you want. Um, but yeah, men, men, I would say huge generalization are more open to things and also are prepared to sit down and use their time to find the things that work for them. Yeah. And I suppose it, it, it sort of goes hand in hand with other areas of our life where we're, we are interested in the, um, where products come from and and you know like you say spending money wisely and sustainability and all those things and and um yeah i think i don't know is it is it the you know as as social media matures you know you just see so much more and and people you know so much more user generated content and Mm -hmm. like yeah like you say there would have been a time where a man posting about putting makeup on might have been more unusual but i mean the the feed is full of you know ads or posts about that kind of stuff now and i don't know is it the kind of reality tv stuff the kind of love islandy thing i don't know but um, i mean there's there's, yeah. th- there's two sides to that in that it's great that we are seeing so much and it is great that people are sharing so much but it is noisy it is so noisy and a lot of what people are saying is either not factually correct or people are doing it to try and be Insta famous or big on TikTok. They all have this, I mean, huge generalization. I sound like an old man now. But when I when I started out in doing this, it's because it was a passion project and it was something I loved doing. There was there was no money behind this. And I really only earned my first bit of money maybe after like like three, four years. You know, I'd been doing this for a long time. And I wasn't thinking about earning. All this content now is people thinking, how can I grow? How can I be yeah. famous? How can I do this? And I, I do think that some of the heart has just been lost. And I, I do a, a whole series of content, which is called Honest Review, which is quite, I mean, in that title, it is ridiculous that I have said an honest review because a review is not an endorsement. A review is a review. But I was just seeing so much content out there of people saying, I've been sent this. It's great because of this, this, and this. And I'm like, well, actually, that product came out yesterday. So you haven't had a chance to actually try that. And you are literally just regurgitating a press release because you think that is your job. And it's not. You should, you are only supposed to be giving an audience something. You, You don't, I, when I was doing my postgrad, they always said you are only responsible for your audience. You're, you know, you, you're not supposed to be doing something for a brand or the commercial things. It's different if you are working with a brand, but if something isn't good, then you need to be able to say, I don't want to do this or it's not right. And it's just, I find it hugely frustrating to see people peddle stuff, which is just below par. And I also feel bad because people are saving money and they're buying into these these influencers. Yeah, Yeah, and it's whether the across social media that you know we could talk endlessly about the sort of policing of it and um yeah are people getting the are they getting honest and and real advice yeah. it's uh, but it, you know it's just funny in in in, in you know, it crosses lots of different sectors doesn't it and it's the same in in music you know where the end goal you know again in the sort of social media generation it feels like the end goal is the fame and it feels like it's kind of yeah. precision tool to kind of you know, get the right kind of TikTok song and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, that sort of the the journey along the way and actually doing whatever art, it, you know, whether it's, you know, painting or music or, or anything, you know, you, you hope in the beginning it's done for, for the art itself and for, for love. And yeah, it doesn't always feel that way these days, does it? <laughs> no. No. Um, but you mentioned life stage um, when we talked just, just now and it's a good segue to talk about how you feel i mean as it's your professional job you know you 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 you're on screen a lot and you're talking about your appearance but you know how do you feel about the the man that stares back at you in the mirror now are you are you in a place where you're you know completely comfortable with your look did you do you ever think oh, i i pref- you know i prefer my look at x age or anything or you know what's your relationship with your appearance right now yeah it's funny because 
I have a whole back catalogue of about 750 videos <laughs> across yeah. nine years. So you can see. Yeah, so I can actually see how I look. <laughs> the evolution. And, I, and I, when I see these videos, I remember how I would feel. And I was so controlling over my appearance when I was younger. I wanted to look in a certain way. I wanted to sound in a certain way. Did you want to look like someone... Did you have a, a, someone's face in mind, or was it? No, I just, I just wanted to. I wanted to look attractive. I wanted to be appealing. I wanted to look comfortable and confident. And I was confident, but I, I wasn't the type of confident I am now, which is like I'm less bothered about yeah. things now. Like I know what works for me. I know who I am. I mean, I'm still trying to work things out. I think we're always doing that. But you know, now at age 35, I do look at myself and think do you know what, Robin, you're not doing too badly. You look all right. You know, I, I know the sort of hairstyles that work for me. I know kind of what gives me an instant boost. Um, I'm exercising a lot because I'm enjoying it. And I find it's this huge escapism. Um, like about a year and a half ago, I started CrossFit and I have seen a huge change in my body. I've always been funny about, like I hold a lot of weight around my waist. So like love handles and my stomach, just like what a lot of us guys have yeah um me too and i was kind of i was kind of okay with that uh like the older i got i just was like this is my body shape but i've kind of been exercising differently and i like what it's done to my body um but you enjoy the actual exercise it, itself as well i love the, i love the exercise because it's so hard yeah. and it's like i kind of like to punish myself i mean there's there's obviously there's probably some therapy there that needs to be done but it's um i just i like that feeling we can arrange this after the party. <laughs> of being kind of like punished and also it kind of moves it moves my mind from thinking about emails and what's coming up and this to just focusing on breathing yeah, yeah. and sort of like working through this and learning something new and yeah i i really enjoy doing that um also i, I i'm not drinking at the moment so i've been off alcohol for 11 months right um and that has changed quite a lot um in that i so like during the pandemic i was living by myself i would be i worked harder and i worked faster um and actually you know financially it didn't really change much for me because i was pitching and i was engaging with my audience and i was mm. enjoying it but I, but at the same time i was kind of masking actually connecting with what was happening and probably how alone i was so yeah in the evenings i would make a point of having this physical disconnection from the day that was. So I would have like maybe a gin or I'd have a little whiskey and I'd maybe only have one or two. But after all of that, I kind of just wanted to disconnect and to kind of get back to, to me. So I thought yeah. stopping with the drink and kind of exercising more actually was a lot better for me mentally. But, yeah. but in doing that, it kind of made me feel better about my body. I just, I felt more connected to what my body could do and kind of its limits and then pushing those limits in CrossFit and just kind of feeling like a lot more in control of myself. So I think this is the first year that I have ever felt like, like I'm confident in a real sort of like real confidence, not just like some sort of bravado. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And I'm, and I'm, I think that's kind of giving me more of the confidence to then help other people in kind of what I'm doing, um, which is great. That's so great to hear. And I think actually, it's funny asking this question during the series, it definitely feels like a theme of, of you know, whatever life stage people are at, that kind of, you know, that kind of fuck it thing of, you know, once you sort of, embrace who you are and sort of worry a bit less about other people there's almost a kind of confidence that comes with that and a, and, that, and that kind of exudes I think through through our appearance mm. and skin and, and everything and it sounds like you're a really good good place for that it's really freeing you know it's like at the end of all of this what have you got to show for it you just you want to be as the word authentic I think is one of the most overused words in the world but actually in this yeah. context it's really true you just kind of want to be authentic and you don't want to have to be answering for yourself and you don't want to be you know thinking about others and yeah it's just like you know life is too short yeah and I think if the kind of work you're you're doing whether it's you know the the street style or, or working more deeply with another individual I, I would imagine if you didn't if you didn't feel comfortable in in yourself that's mm. that would be a hard place to to start that work from it, you know i think mm -hmm. it's you need to have a solid foundation i suppose absolutely yeah, yeah. and and finally robin mm. 
what makes you happy? Oh, God. I Big one, so. I know. I mean, it could be little things. It could be mm. something bigger, but um, just nice to know about. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm still trying to work that one out. Um, <laughs> but what makes me happy? Being next to the water, um, I'm very much a crab creature. I'm a Cancerian. The, I, I'm, uh, okay. I'm getting quite woo-woo in my, in my older uh, years of moon rituals and crystals oh, and I love it. Um, sage spray. But I love being next to water. Just like I instantly feel better when I'm next to water. So it's so lovely when I go back to um, where I'm from, a place called Forest, which is in the Northeast. And we've got some like really beautiful beaches. Um, did, you write, did you grow up right by the coast? Yes. Yeah. Um, which at the time I kind of thought was just what everyone was doing. So I was just <laughs> yeah, desperate so to leave and get to some dingy nightclub in Glasgow. Um, but now I'm like, ah, I need the water. Um, so that's good. I enjoy that. Kind of being with my friends and people who have known me for years and who aren't fussed about numbers on social media because they mean nothing. You know, you get a lot of people like, I've got a verified blue tick. Who cares? You know, like who actually, I mean, I say who cares. It has <laughs> helped a lot uh, <laughs> in terms of business. But when that's all gone, you know, it's like, my good friends who have always been around uh, and who really do know me, um, the space to switch off. Um, like I said to you, I think before we started recording, when I went on holiday, I switched off my man from self Instagram. Um, and I also switched off my email. I think it's a great idea. And that was incredible just to have actual life experiences with like new people when I was away and with some of my friends and um, but not feeling the need to just be posting about every single thing yeah like I I did post but I posted when I got back from holiday um which which was good like I I just thought you know I don't need to be sharing this so I just I just banked a whole lot of stuff and then I posted it when I was back um and that allows you to be in the moment so it makes so much sense and and I think you know we're hearing much more about this sort of digital detoxing thing and it, yeah it's completely it feels weird that we should have to kind of talk about it like that but it, it it's it's a good idea and something i'm definitely going to adopt this summer just because yeah otherwise your your mind is full of all those things all the time and you're you're sort of constantly staring at the blue screen aren't you so. and people feel the need to again huge generalization so many people let's not say people feel the need to share at Absolutely everything. Every, and yeah. we have extremes of people who either are sharing nothing or they're sharing everything or they're sharing about, oh, I suffer with this and I've got this. And yes, share things. But what about just sharing when you feel fine? Yeah. You know, we don't have to have these full on extremes. And also, you don't need to commercialize exactly every emotion yeah. that you've got. Just you be. And Talk to your friends. And if if it's your friend's birthday, you don't need to be saying they are the closest thing to me because I guarantee you've not said that to them face to face. So you don't have to be posting everything. Step away from your phone and just have some real life experiences. Yeah. And then when you finish with that, come back to manfromself.com because I will be around. <laughs> come and check out Robin's content. Exactly. No, I think it's back to that idea of, um, you know, authenticity, isn't it? Mm. But um Robin, thank you so much. Well, thank um, you. It's been such a pleasure to to talk to you and to well, hear both uh, about you and and those fantastic recommendations for products and and routines. But it's it's been an absolute joy. Thanks, Robin. I'll, I'll put some of the um, products you mentioned in in the show notes so people can find out and also where to find you online if they haven't already. But thank, um, you. thank you for having me, Robin. Man for himself. Thanks so much for your time today, and I'll, I'll see you soon. Huge thanks to Robin. Um, really great advice and, and some products there that were new to me that um, I'll mention in the in the program notes on the podcast. Also, that idea of, of putting products in the fridge. Um, I hadn't thought of that, but actually, as we're here in July in, in London, where it's a heat wave, it's a, that's a great idea. So thanks to Robin. Um, you can find him online. He's on Instagram as man for himself. Um, you can find him on YouTube. He's got, um, say, over 400,000 followers on YouTube. Um, you can find him there as Robin James. But I think also if you put in Robin James, man for himself, you'll find his channel and his videos. So much great content there. He, he was talking about restyled where he took a particular man and, and sort of helped them with with clothes, with skincare, grooming, and fragrance. And there's a really great series. And also the street styles where he sort of 
goes up to people in the streets and and offers advice. So um, yeah, check him out. So my thanks to Robin, my thanks to you for listening, of course. Um, I'll be back again soon with another Man in the Mirror. Take care.